Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about my favorite color negative film, which is Kodak Ektar 100. I realized after all this time I've never really done a video about this film, even though it is my favorite color negative film. Not the most common answer I know, but it is a film that I really love because it has so much character, so much vibrance, and it's a really fine grained film, sharp, lots of detail. So there's a lot to love about this film, very little not to like. I know there's a few things some people don't like about this film, but what I want to do today is share with you some of my favorite shots, which I've got loaded up here on Lightroom and go over them and really highlight some of the strengths and the things that I like about this film. Talk about a few of the weaknesses, including things like skin tones, a lot of people talk about and the difficulty in scanning. So I've used color coding to categorize them into a few different interesting ways of looking at this film. So if you look at everything I've got here on the grid, just immediately looking at Kodak Ektar, you can see that it's a very vibrant and saturated film, lots of contrast in some shots. And what I wanna show you first, which is actually to highlight one of the favorite things I like about this film is the way it renders blues. And that's not something that a lot of people necessarily know about, but this film has a very beautiful way of rendering the natural blues and blue greens occurring in nature, such as photos of the sea, the ocean, skies, and things like that and especially for scenes that would not normally have a lot of saturation naturally. Kodak Ektar really has a way of bringing that out that you can sort of see here in this uh, photo taken on 35mm Ektar in the Leica M4. That's what I'm talking about there around those waves. And you can see it reoccurring throughout a lot of these shots here in this category. Now looking at this shot, I intentionally included this one even though it looks very crunchy. The contrast is a bit too much. There's not very good detail. This was a low res lab scan that I got at the time of shooting this role back in early 2017. And what I wanna show you here is a comparison against a, a rescan I did of this frame. So a rescan I did just recently using the Essential Film Holder and Negative Lab Pro to convert it and getting so much more out of this negative, which really surprised me because I wanted to show this shot of iconic Bondi Beach in Sydney and that really great example of how well Ektar can work for scenes of the outdoors, the beach, the ocean, whatever. But yeah, look at the lack of detail just over near the seagulls here around the edges and the blues, too much contrast, even the skin looks really bad. And if you look in here, I know now that the rescan I've done is a lot higher resolution, but it still just goes to demonstrate that sometimes the reason people don't like Ektar is because they're not getting very good scans. And even if it's a high res, sometimes you can get that automatic process through the lab scanner, which is really designed to spit out prints. At the end of the day, the lab scanners don't always do the best job at handling films like Kodak Ektar when you're planning on using digitally, especially. So yeah, just looking at that, a uh, huge difference night and day in terms of the detail that's coming out of this film and how much softer the colors look, the tonality, the roll off between colors and highlights compared to this one, which just looks pretty bad in my opinion. All right, so going back to that survey, you can kind of see that reoccurring theme here that I've got as I flip through these shots. This one in Wilson's prom, same thing here, same thing again here in this street style photo. And it's just great for capturing lots of detail, lots of that vibrancy of life. And uh, even though this shot here is out of focus, uh, it just works well again to demonstrate how well it renders all those different tones of blue from the denim to the sea to the, the roll off into green there. And yeah, so let's go back to the grid here. And what I've got next is shots that I've highlighted with the color green and they're to represent photos which have a lot of green in them, but also just shots of nature and, you know, colors in nature, such as warm sand and earth colors. So I've got everything ranging from greens to earth colors here. As we look at them in survey view, you can again see that Kodak Ektar does a really good job just straight out of the box in giving you lots of vibrance, nice saturation, boosting scenes that might otherwise look flat and giving you really nice results. So in simple things like this shot of the palm tree here, and with this one, you can kind of see that the contrast is a little bit higher and crunchy. I didn't have time to rescan a lot of these. This is a low res lab scan, and you can kind of see that with me zooming in here. And these shots still look quite nice. They could do with the rescan to, to flatten out a bit of that contrast and give better tonality. A long exposure there of a waterfall. Just another street style photo with lots of green in it. 
And this one, just an indoor shot actually that shows that even though it's an indoor shot, there's a lot of natural earth tones and it can really work well for architectural shots, maybe interior things, because Ektar will render it with a lot of sharpness and detail. This one being on medium format, especially again, Pentax 645 outdoors. It really handles warm light quite nicely. I love shooting Ektar when there's nice uh, soft detail in the subject, but warm light to accompany that. So Ektar is a film that definitely loves light loves being shot outdoors but again with that indoor shot I showed you earlier it can handle that quite well also and with some of these outdoor scenes you can see the Ektar often renders a beautiful dreamy look when you have that warm golden hour light this one being a morning golden hour again on the Pentax 645 and Ektar just kind of gives me that that sense of somewhere that I want to be when I look back at the photos and I don't know if that makes much sense but it definitely has a warm inviting look to it and this one here is unique in that it's a sheet of Ektar 100 that I shot on a large format. But look at the amazing amount of detail you get out of large format, let alone Ektar already rendering plenty of detail on other formats. It's just crazy. You can almost not even notice the green at this level. So continuing to get warmer here, these are shots back from Wilson's prom from the same shots as earlier. And these are some of my favorite shots taken on Ektar. They're up in the sand dunes of the Big Drift. And uh, this one in particular, I've made a big print of on Canton Rag photographic matte paper. And I really love this one. It's got that dreamy look once again. Ektar can render scenes quite surreal, even if uh, in reality they didn't quite look like that. It's almost like slide film in that sense. And this was quite a surreal, beautiful scene to be in. So Ektar just takes it even further. Back to medium format here. Again, beautiful way of handling tones like sand, earth, sky, sea. It's like Ektar was designed for nature in a sense. And I definitely think that is one of its strong points. One of the things I really like about it. Another one here with golden light, a nice warm golden hour there. Another shot from the same scene. And yeah, one last shot there for that green category showing off nature. And this was quite a cold sky because it was a thunderstorm. It was quite an interesting day in terms of the weather. And I had this beautiful light hitting the shore there and I just couldn't help taking a shot on the Pentax 6-7. All right, guys, so back to the grid. And the next thing I wanna show off here is what a lot of people know Ektar for, and that is the reds and warm tones. So I've got a selection of favorite shots that have a lot of you know red in them. And looking at them in survey view, you can see that the reds just really pop out of the scene and they separate quite well from the cool tones like the blues. And it's almost like the red just slaps you in the face with how much color contrast it has. Uh, as you can see in this shot here, taken on 35mm Ektar and just moving through them. The shot at Costco there on the Pentax 6-7, these reds have a bit more of a lighter saturation and it is an overcast day. So obviously when it is more overcast, things will take on a cooler tone and a bit less of that contrast and saturation. Not quite full red, this is almost like a burnt orange, but it, the film works really uh, well here as well. And you might have seen this shot earlier in the video I did for the Essential Film Holder where I rescanned this negative, converted it with Negative Lab Pro. This is that version. And again, you can see it just scans really well. Plenty of detail. It's a very sharp film, very low grain. Uh, and even on the box there, they say world's finest grain. And that's uh, not for no reason. So again, really strong reds here. And what better to exemplify that than a fire engine? And you can see how well the reds and yellows look on this film against those blues that I mentioned earlier, the sky, the gradients, everything is quite nice. Again here, I've got the red, green and blue and yellow and all of it happening in this shot. So I thought I'd include it. And this one I really love. It's on 35 mil using Ektar and Sydney once again of this beautiful classic car. It's a Chevy Corvette and uh, it just renders colors beautifully. And uh, this one's sort of warm and cool at the same time, but you can see that shooting directly into the light, Ektar has handled it really well. All right, so back to the grid. And what I wanna show you next is some street photography taken on Kodak Ektar. And I've got them color coded here in purple. And let's look at them in survey view. And you can kind of see that what works well with Ektar when shooting street is playing into that really high contrast and saturation that the film can provide, except maybe on overcast days. And it almost gives me the vibe of, you know, old school street photography shot on slide film. 
especially maybe things like Kodachrome and Ektachrome, it will give you those deep inky blacks if you let them go that way. If you expose more for the midtones and highlights, generally I still expose for the midtones to shadows with Ektar when I can, but on the street I like to to meter for the highlights especially, and you can get results like this where the blacks go pretty dark and uh, you still get that great color pop and that old school look with plenty of detail with the sharpness and fine grain of slide film. So just as I flick through some of the shots here, this one I really like, it does kind of remind me of those old school uh, Kodachrome shots, classic street photography look. Same thing here, Leica M4 on the Zeiss lens, which pairs really well with Kodak Ektar I find. Uh, this one, actually, it is taken on Ektar. A lot of people wouldn't believe it because it is a 100-speed film, but it was shot at f2.8. And again, if you think about it, I'm metering for the highlights in the phone booths, which are actually quite bright. Everything else has gone dark, but I had no problem shooting this handheld at maybe a 60th of a second on the 90mm f2.8. Uh, same thing here, which goes to show that you shouldn't be afraid of the films that are 100 speed. It's not that bad if you really look at your light and examine it and, and think about what you're trying to expose for. This one here was taken in a point and shoot camera. It is a bit of an overcast day here. This one on the Leica M4 once again with the strong yellows. And you can see that this film, like most others, will go a bit blue in the shadows. And you can kind of see that down the bottom there. All right, so moving back to the grid, what I want to show now is some portraits. And this is one of the sticking points when it comes to Kodak Ektar. A lot of people are afraid to use this film for portraits because it does have high saturation. It can really boost the reds a little bit too much sometimes. And I do agree that it can do that. There are some tips that I can give when it comes to portraits. So looking at all these favorite sort of portraits or example portraits I've chosen for this film. One thing I would advise when using Kodak Ektar for shooting portraits is definitely meter for the shadows, like any color negative film. A lot of people say that Ektar is like slide film in that it can't handle too much overexposure or underexposure. I would definitely agree when it comes to underexposure, but Ektar can handle overexposure. The only problem is that you can get color shifts which is often caused by the scanner not handling that dense negative, which is what you will get. Uh, if you look at this shot, this was completely metered for the shadows, which is where Sarah is standing. She's in the shade. There's a completely uh, backlit area there, but there's nice detail in those highlights, in that backlit area. Uh, the skin is exposed well. I will say that Ektar does seem to work a little bit better for people with darker skin, with tan, olive, brown skin, and so on, people of color, but uh, I do have some examples of people, people with lighter skin later on that you'll see work quite well if you're just careful with it. This one again, Sarah at the beach, really bright, bold, vibrant colors, great for playing into that old school magazine look that you will get. Again, meter for the shadows, which is where I've got her standing there, and the highlights, they're not completely blown out. They're just complementing the, the subject in the portrait, which is what you want to do. You don't want to make the mistake of letting your meter be tricked by that backlit area and uh, giving you bad results because Ektar does not look good underexposed. In fact, I even meter at 80 sometimes and with portraits still exposed for the shadows. This one on the 645, again, I would just look at it as that sort of classic magazine look, those bright, bold colors. And here we go, we've got uh, a shot of my friend Nathan here taken on the Pentax 67. And you can see someone with lighter skin, you might run the risk, especially if there's a little bit of reddish tones in the person's skin, it might boost that just a little bit, but I don't think this is too bad. I think this shot still works well. It's not distracting. Uh, obviously, if you have someone and they're maybe a little bit sunburnt or they have a fair bit of you know, warm pigment in the skin tones, you might not want to use this film but do try it. Meter for the shadows, uh, I find this shot is great. I think Ektar really helps this shot. It brings that sense of nature and vibrancy and with the red beanie and the blue and everything, those colors that I talked about earlier works really well. And same thing again here. Uh, this is on an overcast day and uh, I find that the skin tones work really well. So I'm not really sure why a lot of people shy away from Ektar. I think it is to do with often getting bad exposures or bad scans and uh, moving on here I've got a shot where I was assisting on a photo shoot I've mentioned this shoot before it was up in Cairns in northern Queensland and uh, yeah skin tones in this example you might say they're starting to go a little bit orange but what I've done here is I've actually included a rescan 
of this frame, which to me looks a lot better. Now I used this as an example in my video on Negative Lab Pro, where sometimes when you get a scan straight out of a lab scanner like this one, which was on the Naritsu uh, HS1800 or something like that, you can see that the skin is starting to go a little bit too orange. It's a bit muddy. Uh, the exposure, I think, wasn't set correctly in the scanner. The density wasn't set correctly in the scanner, so it didn't really give me the best result. It's not too bad, but just look at the difference between the rescan and just zooming in there, the amount of detail out of that denim from the blues, the Levi's, the sharpness, it all just looks a lot better in my eyes. And even the skin tones are like much brighter. You get more detail, better color separation, tonality, um, sharpness. So sometimes you might have a roll of Ektar which you might, you know, just write off because you thought it's rubbish and it didn't come out well. But oftentimes it could have just been the scan. It might be worth rescanning and seeing what you can get out of that negative. All right, so let's go and look through a few more portraits and got one of John here with the contacts. And I think again, works really well. Uh, it could be a bit brighter, I guess. This was an overcast day. Uh, this one was on the 6.7 taken during a wedding. Beautiful light, great skin tones, great colors of nature. Once again, working really well. I like the contrast, doesn't really need any editing. And that's what I like about Ektar. It's a film that I don't tend to need to edit unless it's correction. So going back to the grid to look at one last category. So now I wanna look at some night shots. Another thing that might be popular to do with low speed film is do some long exposures at night. And I've got some photos here that we can look at in survey view that show off Ektar working quite well for night photography. I haven't done the most night photography on Ektar, but I find this shot works pretty well, nothing wrong with it. This one's on 35 mil, same thing once again. I didn't actually have a tripod for this shot, I was leaning on a car. And uh, this one here, showing those really nice blues once again that you can get when you shoot during blue hour against the warm tungsten lights of this pie shop, which um, really brings me back. It's a great memory, this shot. And this one just taken in the neighborhood of uh, just a house at night with a bright window. Obviously those highlights, they will and can blow out after a certain point, and that is what's happened here, but I think it doesn't really take away from the shot. It still works pretty well. And this one, on one of my first rolls of Kodak Ektar from way back in 2015, uh, when I first started using that film again, and it was in 35 mil Nikon FE. And it just, again, shows those nice bold colors you can get out of this film. Kind of has that slide look once again. All right guys, so that's back to the grid now and you can see that I've made a case at least for myself on why I love this film so much. I know that there are alternative films like Kodak Portra, which I love. I love shooting Portra as well, don't get me wrong. And the benefit of Portra is that you will start with a flatter image where you can add that saturation and contrast later. But I find there's something special about Ektar in the way it actually renders certain colors. Like to me, those blue greens especially don't look quite the same on Portra. And same thing for the reds and a lot of the, the actual colors that you're seeing in these shots. I would rather just shoot Ektar if I am after this particular look, which I personally quite like. I know a lot of people would probably find this look to be maybe a bit too saturated, but again, don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, definitely don't be afraid to overexpose this film at least a little bit. I know a lot of people shy away from that and I initially was the same, but I ran some tests and I know that Carl McDougall's actually done a, an exposure mm -hmm. test on Ektar in one of his videos. So uh, check that out. It'll give you that reaffirmation that this film can handle overexposure, maybe not so much on the underexposure side. And this shot, I don't know if I skipped over it earlier, but this one again, to me, doesn't look too different than Portra, except with that little bit of extra vibrance that bit of extra contrast and it isn't too bad. In broad daylight, if you like to shoot wide open and you have a, a camera with limited shutter speeds and also that it's going to have a really sharp look to it. It's a very fine grain film. You can almost not notice the grain. And yeah, I really like this film. What more can I say? Except I definitely encourage you to try it if you haven't tried it before. And I definitely encourage you to give it another try if you have shot it and had subpar results. I think it's great in 35 mil and 120. Earlier on, I used to hear that it's only worth trying in 120, but I think it's great in both formats. It tends to be a little bit cheaper and more affordable than Portra 400. 
I think it has the potential to scan pretty well. It is more difficult to scan than other films, but once you have a workflow down, once you know how it behaves, it is actually a great film to work with, whether it's in print or in scanning. Starting off with automatic settings, whether it's on a lab scanner or any other home method, you might not get the best results out of the box. Uh, once you have a method down, and I do encourage you to use something like Negative Lab Pro, I find that the latest version has been working really well on my negatives, even with Kodak Ektar. It, it's a beautiful film. I love it for nature, for portraits, for anything really. So I'll definitely be continuing to use this film going forward. I hope this encouraged you to give it a try. Thanks for watching another film review overview video and for all the support on the channel. And I'll see you on the next video.